We are grateful, oh God, for all you have done for us. Hallelujah, we are grateful, oh Lord. Oh, we are grateful, oh God, we are grateful, oh God, for all you have done for us. Hallelujah, we are grateful, oh God, and we will say that you are good, and all the miracles you've done has brought us joy, and we are changed, and all the hopes we have we're pleasing you right now father we declare father we declare that we love you we declare our everlasting father we declare father that we love you, we declare our everlasting love for you. Just personalize that song and we go, and I will say that you are good, and all the miracles you've done has brought me joy. And I am changed, and all the hopes I have are pleasing you right now. Father, I declare, Father, I declare that I love you. I declare my everlasting love. Father, I declare, Father, I declare that I love I declare for Father, Lord, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Let us be coming. Can we, can we, can we put our mics on you, please? Can we put our mics on mute, please? Yes, please. Let's mute ourselves um, um, so that so that everyone, I mean, will not uh, be caught up by the things happening in the background where you are. Um, and God bless you as you do so. So tonight we're just going to be praying. You're going to be praying tonight that Lord, I don't want to spend my one hour or so here for nothing. Open my eyes to receive your word, O oh God. Open my heart to receive your word, O oh God. Open my heart, O oh God. Open my heart, O oh God. I do not want to be like the Pharisees that just sit and just uh, 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 um, weighing what the person is saying. But all I just want to receive from you, I just want to receive from you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to receive from you. I just want to receive from you tonight. I want to receive from you, oh God. I don't just want to come in attendance, but I want to receive from you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Um, I, I want to encourage you to um, get yourself in a place where you cannot be disturbed um, um, by any form of background noise. Uh, um, um, and as you mute to yourself as well, it, the, your surroundings also matters because uh, uh, um, the, the attention we place on a team determines the value we get out of it.
and that's that's plain and simple right um so um i, I want to encourage you to do so hallelujah hallelujah welcome once again to, to today's um, workers meeting i've been asked to share a few thoughts with with us <clears throat> on the subject of authority the subject of authority the subject of authority i i think uh, and i thank god for the organizers of this um um in that the subject of authority is one thing that is not really spoken about not really understood um when we speak about it most times we speak about it that oh touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm right and people don't understand it and they're saying look why i mean can't i have my own opinion um uh, must someone rule over me but the subject of authority is one of the most important subjects in the kingdom of god in fact it is one of the most important principle in spirituality it's the most important principle in spirituality the bible lets us know in i think is, is it the book of jude or something um the, the bible lets us know that even the uh, an archangel I think um, Angel Gabriel could not come against Lucifer all by himself. He has to say, I come against you in the name of the Lord. Why, why have you ever stopped to think why? It is because of the concept of authority. Have you ever thought why Jesus said, no, I must be baptized by, by John the Baptist? We're going to get there. But have you ever thought, do you think he just did it because he's just humble? It is about the subject of authority. You see, the subject of authority is the most, is one of the most important things to understand in the kingdom. Why? For because of safety, 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 safety. And I don't want to jump ahead of myself because even as I'm speaking, I'm, I'm feeling as though I should just rush through, through it. But I'm going to start by pointing us to Genesis chapter one. Because of our time, we will not reach Genesis chapter one. I believe everyone on this call understood what happened in Genesis chapter one. But the kingdom of God in itself is the kingdom of order. O-R-D-E-R. -E Everything is placed in order. God did not put man in a bush or a forest. God placed him in a garden. What's the difference? The difference is order. Order is is the is the is the is one of the scepters of the kingdom of God. When God created the heavens and the earth in Genesis chapter one, if you read through from the verse one to the end, you would realize that God did things in a orderly manner. He started not by creating things that will stay upon the earth. He started by saying, let there be light. Let there be an operation of the kingdom. Let there be a space where, where things can dwell. Then he separated the, the heavens from the earth. He, he, the Bible says he separated the firmament, firmament from the earth. God put things in order before he even created the beast of the field or man in himself. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of order. God is not a disorderly God. Every time you see him do things, that's why he says the plan that I have for you, which means it didn't, you were not by chance. You yourself, you, him creating you, you are not by chance. He says, I know the plan that I have towards you, which means before, before you were created, there was a plan. God is a God of order. God is a God of order. He created the firmament before he made the bird. He created the earth before he made the shrub. He created, he created water. Hallelujah. He created water, the, the, the water bodies, before he created fish. He created all of those things before he asked himself the question, who will rule over all of these things? I will come shortly to that. God is a God of order. If you look outside of your window right now, you will see that the sun is about to set. It is not about to rise. So it, it is about to set. So this time tomorrow, it is going to be the same thing that is trying to happen. The sun will be trying to set. You get it, 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 this time next week is exactly the same thing that will happen, will happen. The sun will never try to rise at this time. 
And that is an order God has put in place. The Bible says that he made the greater light to rule over the day and the smaller light at night. Never would you see that the moon came during the day and then the, 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 the sun came at night. No, God is a God of order. God set things in its place. And one of the things that God laid in my heart to, to, to armor on tonight is that I set things in their place. I set things, that's God, not me. God set things in their place. He sets things in their place. He set the sun in its place. He set, he set the moon in its place. So when he created all of these things and he sat down, he asked himself, after I've created all these things, I need to set somebody in a place to take ownership of all these things. Please, I'm going somewhere. I know uh, what I'm talking about now might not be touching down yet, but I'm going somewhere. So God set things in his place. God puts things in order. The Bible lets us know in the, in, 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 that, that, that God, uh, God is the head of Jesus. Jesus is the head of man. Man is the head of the woman, right? And it is not about who is greater. It is not about greater. You see, so many times human beings, we want to ask, who is the greatest? The disciples wanted to ask, who is the greatest? We are always wanting, as humans, wanting to capitalize on things, but God says, I am setting things in order. It's not just about greatness. It is about the flow of the way I want things to go, the way I want things to go. So by setting man over the woman, it is not about, now I'm not talking about marriage today, but it is not about man being greater than the woman. It's about man having responsibility over the woman, responsibility. God sets things in order. God is not an he is, he is not a disorderly God. Now, if you understand that, you will understand why Jesus came and he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He, 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 that God cannot leave, God being a God of order does not leave people coming to him by chance. You can come in through any door, any door. In fact, you can create your own door and come in. No, no, no. God does not operate that way. God is a God of order. God is a God of order. And order is, is quite important because order does not just talk about sequence in terms of how things are follow themselves, but it also talks about systems, which means how things work, how things work. It doesn't just talk about sequence. It talks about systems, how things work. And that is why in, in the order of life, it puts, it puts, he said, as the hurt remain, seed time and harvest shall not cease. You can never have harvest time before seed time. You can never have harvest before seed time. There has to be a time of seeding before there is a harvest. And God sets those systems in place and those systems cannot be broken. And what does order do? What does order in any organization, in any kingdom, in any way you find yourself? What does order, order do? Order ensures that there is no waste. That is why God in, in, in Genesis chapter two and three, he said, look, I, I did not send rain upon the earth because there was no man to till the ground. God will not waste resources if there is no man. God will not pour out resources if there is no man. God is a, one, is a God of order. If there is somebody responsible and will take ownership, then he will send resources. That's why the word provision, pro there means for, that means for vision. Provision is for vision, right? You, God does not put the cat before the horse. God ensures that things go orderly. And what does order do? The first thing it does is that it ensures that there is no waste. Number two, order 
Number two, order ensures ensures that 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 things are preserved. Things are preserved. There was a there was a time in the in, in, in the book of Judges. The, by, the book of Judges actually ends by saying that all of these things happened because there was no there was no one to lead Israel. Which means that where there is no order, uh, if you read the book of Judges, you will see well, some of the most calamitous things done on the face of the earth, right? And God prevents that by putting in order. That's why the organizations we work in have order, you have procedures. You don't just go do things anyhow. You have order, you have systems, you have procedures. The, the third thing that, that order does, the third thing that order does, aside from preserving uh, um, 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 and, and ensuring that there is no waste, is where we are going to today. Order determines positioning, where you are positioned. Order determines positioning. Please, if we can mute ourselves, that would be great. Order determines positioning. When you say, when you when when you tell someone we have put this in a orderly manner, it means that it means that we have placed things in position that each 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 element of that thing understands its positioning. So when there is a system in an organization, people are put in position to ensure that there is order. And when, when people are placed in position, the next thing that comes with that positioning is responsibility. Responsibility, responsibility. So order determines responsibility. It also determines ownership. Who owns this? So when God sat down and created everything in Genesis chapter one, he said, so what do we do with all of this? So we need someone to be able to take care of and he says, oh, let's mean, make mankind in our own image so they can be responsible. For them to be responsible, they have to take ownership. They have to own it. They have to say, this is why I am here. This is why I, this is why I am here. I am positioned in the order. I am positioned in the order to do this thing. And for me to be able to do it rightly, I have to take it as though it is my own. Or else, or else the next person, the person above me or the person beneath me will suffer. Because if I don't do it well, somebody will have to pick up the waste. Someone will have to pick up the leftover and do it. Order determines your position. Your position determines your responsibility. You can only do well in your responsibility if you take ownership. If you take ownership, it is, so for example, I'll use example for, uh, of this meeting. I was asked to speak. I can only make an impact and make your one hour worthwhile if I take ownership of the speaking today. If I just say, I'll say something, shall you, it will flow, you know? That is lack of responsibility. So my question to you today is that, do you take ownership of the things given to you? I'm not talking just in church, including church, but everywhere you find yourself, do you take ownership of your responsibility? Do you, do you run it as though it's your father's business? Jesus said, I am about my father's business. Sometimes, you know, sometimes people get themselves in a very bad position with God because they will not do anything right except their own thing. Except something that has their name as label. They won't do it right because they are always half-hearted about doing things. God is not looking for half-hearted commitment. That's why he said, who is on the Lord's side? I, I, I place before you today, throughout the scriptures, God places before people choices. 
I place before you today, life and death. I advise, choose life. So you and your, and your seed may live. God, God gives us options, but we have to make the choice. Your responsibility, do you run it as though it is you? Can I shock you that wherever you are placed, either in church or outside church, if it is not working, there is only one person responsible in that if that positioning is at fault, there's only one person responsible. And you know who it is. When we look at the mirror, we see who it is. So do you take ownership? Imagine God creating man. I know man sinned and fell, but man just comes and says, is this, is this what you want me to do? Okay. Okay, I'll try, Sha. I'll try. I'll try. As I do, I'll be doing my own thing too, you know. I'm not saying don't run your life, please. I am saying everything you do is a reflection of who you are. A man is a mediocre simply because what he does is his result is mediocrity. Simple. A mediocre is not somebody that was born and they labeled him mediocre. A mediocre is somebody who consistently delivers result of mediocrity. Now, please, I'm not, I'm not coming against anybody. I'm just telling you the plain truth as it is. You know, this is workers meeting, so we can, we, we, we can go a bit deeper. A mediocre is somebody who consistently delivers results of mediocrity. An excellent person is someone who for the most part delivers excellence, right? So if I see it and I say, I will not take owner, I will try to do what I have been asked to do, but I won't take ownership. I will have slippery shoulder. It's not my, it's not my fault though. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's this other person. They should have told me before. They should have briefed me before. Or they should have told me two, two years before they told me. <laughs> you know, those kind of things. And we are not taking ownership. When, even when you know that it is your positioning, your positioning is your responsibility. Your responsibility should be what you own. If you cannot own it, leave it. I'm not talking only about church, even at work. If you can't own it, leave it. What has God called you to do, even in your private life? Are you honing it or you are waiting for, for something? You know, the Bible says that if, if you are unfaithful in another man's team, we looked at this in Bible study in January. Uh, so I don't want to flog it, but if you are unfaithful in a normal man's thing, the Bible says, who will give you your hope? That, I mean, if, if Jesus is asking that question, that means he himself will not give you. So he's asking who else will give you? Who will give you your hope? You know, Oh, one of my mentors at the distance, I read his books and I listen to him. He says that, I mean, you know, many people say, oh, you see, when I, when I start my own business, when I start my own business, I'll be serious. All these things I'm doing, I'm just doing small child's play. When I start, I'll be serious. See, no, you have become what you have been doing. If you have consistently not been doing well at your work. When you start your own business, it will, you, will, you cannot just switch overnight. Remember, it is not what we are paid for what we do that matters. It is who we become while we do what we do. <laughs> it is not what we get paid to do what we are doing that matters. It is who we become. David, looking after the sheep, and God saw him in a man who will not let the sheep die in the face of danger. So God looks at him. If this man can 
can save a single sheep like this, going after the lion and the bear. Imagine what we would do with my people. So he became a leader while he did what he was supposed to do in his positioning, what he was responsible for, he took ownership of it. Think about it. Jesus talks about a shepherd. Jesus talk, talked about a shepherd. He said, he said a shepherd is somebody that will give his life for the sheep. He says, but the hireling, which is the hired person, we leave the sheep in the face of danger. Now, was the sheep that David was looking after, was it his own? No, he was his father's own. They even said, prophet Samuel is coming tomorrow. Yet his father said, you go and look after sheep. It's not, it's not people like you. Yet, he does it with the whole of his heart and would almost give his life for the sheep. Ownership. Do you take ownership of your position? Oh, I, I, I don't know if you guys know um, Domino's, uh, not, not the pizza, actual Domino's, right? <laughs> right? If you take a piece or two pieces out of a Domino, the effect you will get when it falls will not be as, as synchronized as it should be. Why? Because in the because somebody, because certain positions have been taken out, they have been misrepresented, they are not present, you get. So as the domino effect is coming through, it might not have the desired result because someone in their position has left it vacant. Can I say to you that most of the most of the parables in, in the Bible by Jesus talks about this plain truth of ownership. Talks about how people, how, how God will, will, will request. Many people think God will only ask for their talents. Can you sing? Did you sing? Sorry, <laughs> that's, that, that is just, that is just, um, um, that's just, yes, he will ask about that. But, He's going to ask about your position, your positioning, where, where he has put you. He's going to ask, why, why haven't you done it well? You know, that, that, that master told the servant, he said, if you knew you couldn't do something about it, why didn't you just put it in usury? That means why didn't you just do something about, about it such that at least we will get something out of it? Why don't you just say that, look, I'm sorry, I can't dispense my responsibilities for now, for these reasons. There is nothing wrong with that. And let the kingdom of God proceed. Ownership. Ownership. Jesus said, I am about my father's business. Ab about my father's business. So ownership, I, I spoke about position, responsibility, ownership. But order also talks about authority. Who is responsible for what? If it fails, who is the de facto person? Who is the, who is the leader here? God does not do things and say, you know, I, I've been in places that say, uh, uh, this movement, uh, there's no leader, or there's no leader at all. Sorry, it's not going far. It's not going to go far because there is no leader. Leadership in, with God is an important concept that God said in Isaiah chapter six, from verse one to five, you know, he said, uh, um, 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 uh, Isaiah said, look, in the, in the year Uzziah died, I saw the Lord um, and all of that. And after God had dealt with his heart, God then says, I seek for a man. What he wanted to do wouldn't take just a man to accomplish. Yet what he is seeking for is a man. God, I know that it is true that we are all God's children, right? Well, uh, well let, let's just take it like that. That Maybe yeah, we are all God's children. Maybe we are, yeah, we are all the same before God. 
but it is not totally true. It is not totally true. It is not totally true, and I know many people, uh, you know, will kick. Oh, uh, what are you saying? Wait, it is not totally true. God took God. Uh, uh, God called out Moses, Miriam, and Aaron. He said, "All of you, come outside." And he said, "Look, I will. I speak to prophets in dreams and in visions, but the same is not true with my with my son Moses." I speak to him face to face. And at the start of that chapter, Mary and Aaron were saying, what is always wrong with this Moses? Does God speak to him alone? He speaks to all of us. They are saying we are all the same. And God is saying, sorry, you are not all the same. Why am I saying this? I'm not saying this so that you put somebody at a level. I'm saying that when God puts somebody in a place of either leadership over you and all of that. You might be greater than the person on the physical. You might have more potential than the person, and we are coming to that. You might, you might have more knowledge than the person. You might have all of that, right? But God takes that position that he has put before you very seriously. Now let's look at that very carefully. So um, I said all of that. I've tried not to open the scripture so we, we, don't, we don't spend time. But now we're going to open the scripture to Matthew chapter 3. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 3. Was... Verse 13 to 16. So I read from NLT. And he said, then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. John is his cousin, first of all, is, is his cousin, right? And John has started his ministry um, in the wilderness. But John tried to talk him out of being getting or out of getting baptized. Why? He says, I am the one who, who needs to be baptized by you. He said, so why are you coming to me? So now remember that it has been prophesied from the book of Isaiah that, that there is a voice sounding from the wilderness, making straight the path of the Lord, right? And that voice is John. That voice, choosing the voice was God's business. Remember what I said God, God wants us to establish today, that I set men in their place. I set men in their place. It was not Jesus's decision. It was not John's decision. It was God's. He said it, it was God's decision. And he said, look, look, there is, there is a voice that has to cry from the wilderness, making straight to the path of the Lord. That means it will be the one who will introduce you. He will be the one who will, by authority, his authority at the time, bring you to bear and all of that. Jesus did not have a ministry at this, at this time. Jesus was coming to John, who already had a ministry, but John knew who he was. He knew that he will be greater. He had say, he, he said later on to say that, ah, oh, his ministry is doing better than, than John's ministry, right? Right, okay, um, that's how we should be that he increase and John would, re would reduce. However, however, that has not happened. And John is trying to say, oh God, your potential is great. Your potential is much. Where you are going is you that should baptize me. And Jesus response, responded, he said, but Jesus said, it should be done for we must carry out all that God requires, which means you have been given the authority to be my forerunner. You have to be the one who baptized me. I have to submit to you now because it's a requirement. Fulfilling all righteousness, King James says, fulfill all righteousness. Fulfilling all righteousness is not like half hearted thing. It is about getting all the requirements done. 
one of the major requirements for launching into destiny is submission to a chosen authority by God. Submission to a chosen authority by God. And he's, so, so John agreed and he baptized him. John agreed and he baptized him. Let's look at what happened in verse 16. He said, after his baptism, as Jesus came out of the water, the heavens opened. So when Jesus said, we have to do all that is required, required for what? Required for the heavens to open. Many people have their heavens shut. Even as, even, many people have their, their heavens shut because they are not submitting to the authority God has placed over them. And I will show you this. I, 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 we, we still have some time, so I, I, I hope to be able to go deep into this to make it clear. This is not just one scripture thing. It's across the entire scripture. Across the entire scripture. Across the entire scripture. The heavens opened after is submitted appropriately. Oh, God the requirement. That's true. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um. Yeah. Okay. So it got the requirements done. It got the requirements done. And then the heavens opened. Absalom, heir to the throne, heir to the throne, just needed to submit to his father. Heavens shot because he came against the authority set before him. Gehazi had the potential in terms of, if you were to look at arithmetically, to be a great prophet, he said, well, my master, my master knows I'll be this thing. He's always collect this money. He's always, he's always collect this. So he went and represented the master. He said, my master asked me to tell you that two prophets have arrived and I need to collect this. Everyone shot immediately. I, I, I like to point you, I'm conscious of my time. I like to point you to some scriptures before we look at biblical examples. Jude chapter one, verse six. Jude is just the book before Revelation. Chapter one is the only chapter and we're going to the sixth verse. It says, and I remind you of angels who did not stay within their limits of authority. I remind you of angels who did not stay within the limits of their authority, of the authority God gave them, but left the place where they belong. God has kept them securely chained in prison of darkness, waiting for the day of judgment. God takes any form of rebellion against instituted authority by him, seriously. Seriously. The major, the major crime Lucifer committed was coming against authority. Let's look at that. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Verse 13, and it says, for you said, that is talking about Lucifer, if you look at verse, verse 12, it says, I will ascend into heaven and set my throne above God's stars. And I will preside on the mountain of gods, of the gods, for far away in the north. I will climb to the highest heavens and I would be like the most high. Now, the most high is here. He is there. He said, I will ascend and be like him. I would, I would 
I would, I would do things that takes me away from that limit of authority and bring me to a path. Who does he think he is? I can be like the most high. Going beyond the limits of his authority. Now, these things are very, very serious. So, in the book of First Samuel, chapter 15, verse 26. First Samuel 15, verse 26. After he did some things, he did the first one. There was a problem. He, then he did the second one. God asked him to do something he didn't do. Um, he, he's a king. He was under pressure because he wanted people to be on his side. He decided to go beyond the limits of his authority and did what a, only a priest should do. And God came here via, via, via Samuel. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. I'm just going to make this statement. Uh, I want to put it here. He says, rebellion is as, the, is as the sin of witchcraft, which means the way God sees which, in fact, it's not like, it's not like the way God sees it. It is equal to witchcraft because uh, I don't want to go really <laughs> into that, but the Bible talks about the one of the works of the flesh is actually witchcraft. I know when we talk about witchcraft, we always think about flying women that are old. No, <laughs> it is a system. Is is a system? Is it, and that's what movies try to make us believe. But it is a system of usurping authority, manipulation, and oppression. Right. And if you look, if you have the time. Second Samuel chapter 15, verse 1 to, to 6. You see what Absalom did. Manipulation, oppression, deception. He didn't go and consult any Babalao. Or shopping authority equal to witchcraft. And this is a very, remember what I said, that the heavens opened when Jesus stayed under authority. Look at Saul, Gehazi, Miriam, Absalom, even Lucifer, the, the fallen angels, all of them, heavens closed over them because of the concept of rebellion. Rebellion is not when, you know, Baba Deboe said, when certain thoughts of rebellion begin to come to your heart. It's a serious matter of that you should go out even fast. Because the reality is, it is drum beats of war. Check through your scriptures. It has never ended well. Now, I'm not saying this, you know, one of the thing, reasons, you know, I said at the start, the authority is something that is not really spoken about too much because because maybe people don't want to be misunderstood. Um, they want to, you don't want you to feel like maybe you're trying to keep them on, keep people under you by force, blah, blah, blah. But check your scriptures. I've quoted scriptures to you today. If you, if, you, if you go and check Miriam, Numbers chapter 12, verse 1 to 14. Even Moses begged for her. He said, God said, no, she is going out of the camp for seven days, leprous. Simple. Moses, that God was defending, begged for her. Samuel begged for Saul. God, so God said, I don't want to hear that prayer point again. Look through the scriptures. If, if you even look at the judgment on witchcraft, it is not play. Suffer not the witch to do what? God does not, God does not, anything that has to do with coming against the order of the kingdom. God frowns a lot against it. So that is why even when we are carrying ourselves, doing what we need to do, taking ownership, what happens is sometimes frictions will happen between yourself and maybe somebody above you, maybe your HOD and all of that. And maybe things happen and you think this thing, you, we must always guard our hearts 
we must always guard our heart to ensure, to ensure that we are in the right place. We must, if, if it means taking some time off, going to pray, staying away from the situation, guard your heart with all diligence. Don't get into the place. The enemy always wants to see the temptation to rebel will come to everybody or the temptation to withdraw. You know, some rebellion are, or they are not obvious. It just starts with withdrawal. It comes to everybody. The temptation to, to badmouth people in authority will come to most people. That one might not come to everybody, but it will come to most people, right? But you have to guard your heart. You have to speak to yourself. You have to pray about it. Withdraw from the situation. Because the reality is we are all here in the presence of God to, to walk for him and be prosperous and be blessed and all of that. Yet, you know, someone said it this way and I don't want you to mi misunderstand me. Someone said it this way, that God is good, but God is not always safe. And it is true because there are certain crimes you can commit somewhere else and maybe the highest you will get a fine. But if you commit it in the presence of God, it can even have generational impact. I'm not trying to scare anybody. This is workers meeting and we have to say the truth for the truth shall make us free. Today, regardless of who you are, where you are, where God has positioned you, take ownership. It, uh, my, my note is still full with lots of examples and why we should be under authority. You know, that man who met Jesus, he said, I am under, I've never, for a long time, I didn't understand what he was saying. He said, I am under authority. He didn't say, I have authority. He said, I am under authority. And then he says, I say to the people under me. So, sorry, if you are under authority, you should tell us that you answer your master. It's because you have a legitimate right to use your authority in Christ Jesus. Use your authority in your positioning only when you are effectively under the authority he has placed over you. And I know that is because of our time, we can't go really into it, but I want to really try to ramp down here because I think we have, the major point has been passed. We are, we are soldiers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's not, let's not fall for the temptation of disrupting the order of our battalion. Don't disrupt the order of our troops. The Bible lets us know, God said, whoever, whatever comes against my body, I will come against it. Sometimes some parts of the body are coming against the body. Guard your heart with all diligence when it comes to the sub object of, subject of authority. In church, you have someone ahead of you. You might feel you are better. You might feel that you are more engaged to do it, but submit. You know, you know what Elisha said unto Gehazi? He says, didn't I see you when a man came out and gave you those gifts? He said, is it the time to receive gifts, which means there is a time in future when Gehazi will be able to receive his own gifts by himself and decide by himself. But he said, is it the time? Okay, you think you are better. Don't worry, your time will come. God is a faithful God. You don't have to usurp authority to do so. You don't have to downplay someone's credibility to make your credi cre credibility go up. 
So let's guard our hearts with all diligence. Guard your heart with all diligence. Don't allow the enemy to present to you as a present, I mean, to, don't, to make you fall for what he presented to Jesus. That look at this, all of these things. If you bow to me, that means if you leave your authority and come under my own authority, I will give them to you. Don't fall for that. And God bless you as you do so. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for tonight. We thank you for your word. We pray, O oh God, that once have you spoken, twice have we heard that all power belongs to you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that we come to the understanding that you have set us all in the place where you want us to be for now. And when your time is right, you would ask us to move ahead. Lord, I pray, oh God, that every word you wanted to pass across tonight, that you cause it to touch everyone's heart, oh God, and cause us to have that transformation in which you desire that we have. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Over to you, Daddy. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kayo De Okay. The Lord bless you. I pray that God will continue to fill you afresh. The anointing of God upon your life will not run dry. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for making yourself available for this training. We have uh, 38 people or 38 logins because I'm aware that some family they may they may log in just want to uh, use one uh, one equipment. But uh, please, I want to mention the names of the people I have here. And if I didn't mention your name, please uh, just type, uh, give me your name on the chat. Well, I have not theory okay here, and that's myself. I have Abby here. I want to believe that is Abiola Lushiman. I have Abin Bola here. I want to believe that is uh, Abin Bola Leshe. I have brother Akib here. I have Anita Soro here. I have Bola Suleiman here. Bumi Bel here. Christian Ola Johnny here. David Ajayis here. Dola Pois here. Dokas Jerry's here. Sister Dupe Gundola. Esther Fola. I know Fola is a Sister Fola Ke. Uh, then uh, Pola Kewumi also here. Ikeolua is here. Janet is Janet Ugula de Mama is here. Joy Kayo Dioke, well, that's our teacher. Ola Dele Okubote. I want to believe that might be she, her husband is watching along with her. Am I right, ma? Lucia Gwali, she is here. Brother Ulu is here. Okubadi Joyce here, yeah, Pastor Ayo. Prince Adeniji, this is something, am I right? I don't know which, uh, which kingdom is his own. Remy, this Remy Olani, I'm so sure. Brother Jerry, and this is uh, Mrs. Uh, Mr. Rioke. Mr. you've missing. Papa Brother Samson, Mr. Lanio. Um, yeah. After, no, I have Prince Adeniji. I have, I have Sister Remy, I have Samuel. Okay, yes, uh, Brother Lani, yeah, you are right. I have uh, Sister Temi, Tofumi, how are you, my daughter? Tolu Lope, Akindele, I'm so sure. Tolu Lope, okay, is here. Tony is here. Sister Lawson is here and Wale, whether Wale, this Wale Akinde, this Wale Akinde, um, the Lord bless you all. Um, we will be having another training on uh, next week, Saturday. Uh, and uh, 
at that meeting, I will be making some uh, fundamental announcement to the house, only to remind us also that the church will be, we will be opening physically next week, Sunday, that's uh, May 2nd, uh, except otherwise instructed, we are going to have one service, except otherwise instructed later on. And the time will be 10 o'clock. We want to see how far we are able to, to go. And I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, shall we, can we please bow our heads? To, do I have any other, uh, uh, brother Shagun, any other announcement concerning clearing and cleaning? I know I've spoken with uh, Sister Bola and, uh, so, uh, and uh, Pesa Deniji. Uh, apart from the people we're expecting tomorrow, not, no other announcements, sir. Okay, yes, I'm expecting the ushering team tomorrow, and that is Brother Kindele, uh, Brother Okubote, uh, um, Biodo Anderson, um, Polake Akewumi, who again? That's a battle, sir. No, that should be more than that. Okay, I first excuse me, Mrs. Uh, Lawson Perfect. for obvious reasons. Yeah. Uh, who again? Brother Akidele, any other person? Tolu Akidele, sir. Tolu Akidele, yes. Tolu, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. That's good. Okay, so let's uh, let's close this meeting. Uh, is Pastor your job? Have, have I mentioned his name? You have mentioned my name, sir. Okay. You okay, mentioned sir. my name, yes, sir. Yeah, I want to believe that Sister Shola um, Olani is beside you. No, she's uh, in the hospital. You have not mentioned my <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. You didn't okay. mention Tiwa's name, so you mentioned Taiwo, but it's Tiwa. I've said that I'm aware that some, fam uh, some family will be watching together. I think I did say that. But the fact is that you don't mention her name. So that the, the fact that you mentioned that some family are mentioning together doesn't cover Tiwa. Okay. Tiwa, Tiwa, <laughs> you did yeah. not mention my name. I, I mentioned uh, Taiwo. Uh, you mentioned my name, but Tiwa, I say you don't mention her name. Ah, that is it. Oh, God help us rebellion. <laughs> See, that is not rebellion. That is standing up, talking. That is not rebellion. That is talking for yourself. And not for yourself. That is fighting for your rights. Yes, you mention everybody's name. That is not rebellion at all. Oh my God. Yes. Who will deliver, who will deliver me? Let's try your day. Let's do your day. Do the judge now. If it's rebellion. Are you there? I am here. You beside me, Akim Olani. Are you there? <laughs> I'm there, sir. I'm, I'm on your side, sir. <laughs> I'm on your side, sir. I'll deliver you, mommy. At the top of the you know, see why you are here. <laughs> Daddy. Daddy. Okay. Daddy. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to thank everyone. Um, that's it. Uh, this, this is a larger house. Thank you very much. God bless you. I, in the I, name of Jesus Christ. Um, I, let's sir, bow. Sir? I, didn't, I don't think you mentioned the Okuba Ah, that's I did. Eh, but Emu, Boru come you. I said the Okuba Dejos. Okuba Dejos. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Move it, Oh, yeah. The Okuba Dejos. I'll fight. I'll have to do Okuba <laughs> Maybe it's in two hours camp. I can't go on you joke, you are Oh, it's nearly better than me. Okay. Uh, let's pray. So, Pastor Ayo, can you please let, uh, pray and uh, let's, uh, let's um, close this meeting, please. Father, we want to thank you for tonight. Thank you for feeding us the way you have done tonight. And thank you for your son that you have used. Thank you for blessing him with knowledge. Thank you for equipping him with enablement. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you for the joy in this house. 
and thank you for your peace in every home. Father, please accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Lord, everything that we have been fed tonight, Lord, every knowledge that has been parted into us tonight, everlasting Father, every food that we have eaten, spiritual food that we are eating tonight, Lord, my Father and my God, they shall not be taken away from us in Jesus' name. And none of the words that have been pronounced, none of the blessings that we have received, none of the warnings that we have received shall stand against any one of us in judgment in the name of Jesus. Everlasting Father, eternal rock of ages, continue to bless your children. Continue to grant them auction to function. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we ask for increased knowledge in your word. We ask for wisdom from heaven. Father, be quit unto us in the name of Jesus. As your children will be departing tonight, Father, we know we are not departing from your presence. We know, King of glory, that your presence will forever remain with us. Thank you, Lord. When we shall meet again next Saturday, Father, we know we shall be fed. We shall be greatly fed to the glory of heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' blessed name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful night. Take care, everyone. Amen. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Thank you for last day, Father. Thank you.